on, on this one, on, on the colors, uh, that's, was that a traditional part of, uh, were they colored with, with dye stuffs in an, in an era in the before early paint? Days, in the early days, it was uh, graphite and um, charcoal and, um, excuse me, graphite and charcoal and, and um, copper oxides and, and um, earth, earth oxides, mm -hmm. red oxides, things like that. And they're mixed with uh, certain uh, mediums like uh, chewed salmon eggs and, and the, but it, you know I could do that now except that the first rain takes most of it off. Mm -hmm. So I use house uh, latex house paints. Makes That's a quite a contrast between that that uh, those two slides. Yeah. The finishing work uh, is with knives and uh, also with a, a special kind of ads that puts a, a nice finish on the on the pole. Finishing is really important. It really shows you the difference between mediocre and well done. Just an absolute finish. How how intricate do you get when you? I mean, is it, is it more of a? Well, it, it depends on the pole, the, the design, and the person who is uh, who is uh, carving the pole, and who the design uh, that the uh, the person who is asking you to do the pole wants. You know? uh, and also tribal style. Tribal style uh, dictates uh, what it's going to look like before you even start. You know, bears, eagles, wolves, killer whales—they're not all the same. Not every tribe. People think totem poles. They think it's like a generic thing. You know, but every tribe is very, very different. This is a wing that I'm carving there to, to uh, be attached to a pole once it's once it's raised. Beautiful stuff. So you can see there, you can't really tell, but on that slide there, on the, the totem pole is holding, the guy on the pole is holding a cell phone just to the right there. You see just, uh, it's not finished in, the, in this photo, but uh, it was a little bit controversial, but it was a modern pole, so I thought a cell phone would be appropriate. Now we've got some, some students for this class on uh, Prince of Wales Island up there, and um, that's how I talk to them. They're on cell phones, so it's, it's part of... <laughs> Part of modern culture, by all means. Yeah. When uh, when wings are made, the, the design is painted on first, then they're carved, and then attached. It's pretty hard to raise a totem pole with the wings uh, attached to it, so we try to fit them beforehand or prefab them beforehand, mm -hmm. and then uh, go up on uh, on scaffolding or or uh, lifts and uh, and attach them afterward. Now, in, in raising it, they, do you have to the simple block and tackle? Do you have to have power equipment? Well, there are different. To, that's an. That's I mean, a for a big one, obviously. For, yeah, for the big ones, uh, I've never used block and tackle, but we've had plenty of uh, plenty of help with cranes and and um, uh, manpower too, with ropes and uh, many different ways you can think of to, to raise it. Uh, and that's, that's this is this is an eagle without its beak. That's uh, a, a, an example of mortising. Where the hole is prepared in the in the uh, totem pole itself, and then a uh, a piece is attached to it and, and into the pole, and then it's glued and pegged into the pole itself. What? That's what's the design there at the top? Is that? There's an eagle holding onto the tail of a killer whale. You can see that the okay. the beak is attached. To, uh, that's the same figure mm -hmm. with the beak attached, and also with the wing uh, prefab on it, still in the workshop. Is that I think there's a slide coming that shows it, uh, shows the beak being held above it too. And there's a, there's a pole with the wing uh, attached to it in situ. That, that's the eagle again on that's the top. That's a yeah, a different eagle. And now is that My again? My crest is the eagle. I, I've been given uh, a hard time uh, often about why I put eagles at the top of my totem poles, but uh, it's my totem pole. <laughs> but, but I'm just kidding. It, 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 it's appropriate for the story. There's the beak being attached. Any particular kind of glue or is it uh, epoxy? Now it's, or? Now it's epoxy and, or a, a good wood glue. The uh, next step after the, paint, the carving is finished is to, is to paint the, the pole. And uh, uh, that, it's that time that I probably get the most help. You know, I get the, <laughs> I, uh, get help from you know teaching my son how to how to do that and I and uh, friends of mine lend a hand too in in painting painting is the is a part that you need a lot of help in it just takes more time 
looks like pretty fine work trying to uh, make all of the edges match. The uh, final thing before the pole is raised is to uh, put a coat of seal a sealer on it to uh, preserve the wood for longer than it normally would be. Uh, like I said, red cedar lasts a lifetime, but it lasts two or three lifetimes with a regular, uh, regular maintenance. And there's such a uh, investment in, in dollars these days, you know, and, and in time. The poles are poles are not always stuck in the ground, as I said. Uh, they're attached to metal I beams. They're attached to how, uh, uh, posts that are already existing that are stuck into the ground or put into cement. And uh, it just helps the log to to last much longer. And uh, sure. otherwise, they're even regardless of how good the red cedar is in resisting rot. Uh, there's going to be a time when it when it will rot at the base from the water. So this is mainly an economics thing, I guess, too. It's not everyone can afford a totem pole. And uh, those that can want, it, want to keep it around for a long time. Well, yeah, I would think if it's certainly representative of a family crest or, or heraldry, as you, as you said, that uh, clearly you want it to maintain itself for several generations. Uh, that one looks fairly elaborate right there. That... Yeah, that was one I did. Uh, we put up pretty recently, it was a history of a, of a site uh, across the Hood Canal Bridge over uh, near Kingston, Washington. Okay. Uh, so one we did for uh, a logging company. Or... Uh, is this part of, of a ceremony well, in terms you know, of raising? One or? of the things that I, not, I, that I stipulate when I do a totem pole is that uh, a totem pole means everything to our people. And I want to uh, make sure that it's, it's given life by putting it up. You know, putting it up with uh, proper uh, procedures and ceremonies, potlatch. So my, uh, my apprentices and I discuss uh, how it's going to go and, and what, it, what we're going to do with the uh, ceremonies and uh, songs that are going to be written. And then when, this, when the, when the uh, actual pole raisings happen, we have proper songs like the pole raising song, you know, and um, the... Uh, Songs say Cedar Man is standing up. Cedar Man is telling our story. You know. Then gifts are given. Uh, I, you have to pay everyone that's helped you on the poll. You have to publicly acknowledge their help. Um, it's a real, you know. Like my friend uh, Wayne says, um, uh, we're like Coke. We're the real thing, you know. I don't know if I'm supposed to plug that, but um, it's okay. But. In order for it to mean something to us, we have to have a public display, we have to pay uh, people who uh, have helped, and we also everyone who witnesses the, the raising of the totem pole uh, is given a gift. And it, it gives it validity, like your, like I said, like your notary public. Yeah, you know? so it's, a, again, within that spirit of the, of the pot latching that That's gives it uh, recognition, yeah. uh, sanction, if you will. That's right. And it really, uh, it's the it's the hub of our wheel. It's the center of our uh, culture is the potlatch. The art, everything you see, everything you've been looking at today uh, comes from or has something to do with the potlatch.